Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, this is Taylor Welding, and I got a question in the comment section about how to hold your 7018 still when you're going uphill. Scott Boykin asked the question. Thank you, Scott, for the question. Anybody else that wants to leave uh, questions like that, I appreciate it. it. Gives me video ideas, and I actually do have a very good way, or a, a very good tip, I'll say, uh, about holding your stinger. We're going to cover all the obvious and some things that might be overlooked first, and then I'm going to give you my favorite tip about holding your stinger, how to hold your stinger when going uphill. Because what happens, for some reason, when you're grabbing it normal and you put that to go uphill, you know, most of the time, I got my rod bent a little bit, it's another tip. Uh, when you do this, it makes it shake. Something to do with holding it, you know, just a little bit, wants to make that 332, 14 inches long shake. So the first thing, find something. C-clamp that I have on my anvil where I've been doing the welding. Uh, I already had this here. I'm going to have something to put my arm on if at all possible. And if I don't, I'm gonna have some way, this method right here, some way to steady whatever it takes. It's not my favorite, but it does work. Um, you can get steady. Uh, have you drank coffee? Did you just finish drinking a Red Bull? Did you stay up all night drinking liquor? You know, all those things that make you shake. That drinking all night will really make you shake, like a cat crapping peach seeds, really. Now, you're set up, you're comfortable, you're using two hands, however you want to, whatever. You can pull cue it. I do that, I wouldn't say a lot, you know, if I'm out of position, I will, or especially if I'm on the bottom of some pipe, I'll kind of get it going and then slide my hand back. So if we were going to start here and we're having trouble, you could, as long as you have somewhere to put this, you can get it started. And at, when you're down here and it started, that's the time to start easing your hand back. Don't wait till you get going and the rod's getting short and getting hot and you're burning your fingers. I used to do that when I first started. I would do this too much and the fingers on my glove would bend backwards. <laughs> Don't do that, everybody call you hot fingers. So, we're comfortable. We're, we've got a little bit of, uh, supposedly the best rod angle straight in. We've got a little lean on it. That's another thing. And this happens to me a lot when I'm making the videos. I'm trying to weld around the camera and to get those arc shots. Go ahead and if you know you're gonna hit this, this clamp when I'm coming in, go ahead and bend your rod. Just bend it up just a little bit and that'll free you up to go you know, all the way in without having to, to adjust in the middle somewhere. That's hard to do. Now, the next thing, you can use a shorter rod. I made the welding video yesterday with these 12 inch rods. That's a big difference. I mean, a couple inches is a couple inches. And being hung way out there on the end, you know, it makes a big difference. If these things were two or three inches longer, they'd really be, you know, shaky. So we got our pill cue. We've got our, uh, this side, really stable. But still, you'll notice, I'll hold it just like I would. You notice it's still shaking just a little bit. The best tip I got, and I do this subconsciously, I've been doing it a long time, when I go to weld something like this, I immediately put my pinky behind the lead. And your lead too, you could use a whip, a, a, a lighter lead if that helps. I don't, I just use one on and just go with it. But put your pinky behind that lead and it'll help you where you don't have to grip this thing, like white knuckle grip it, because that will make it shake. If you're gripping this stinger hard, you can forget about uh, not having a shaky rod. So go ahead and put your pinky behind here. It will naturally, just your, the way your wrist will sit will automatically, if this was straight, it automatically pointed up almost in the perfect position to go uphill. Now you can apply this hand and you'll be right where you need to be. Well, for me, right now, it would be more like this. Setup is everything. You've got to be comfortable, do whatever it takes. Get a jack stand, uh, weld something. You know, if I didn't have this there, I could weld something right here and then put my arm on this. That would actually be a little bit better 
you know, well, probably not. It's, it, it'd need to be down here. But, you know, whatever it takes is the point. Try the pinky trick, try whip, try pull keeling. You know, if, I hate to tell you to do that because it's more, kind of a bad habit, but you can. Just make sure after you scratch off and the rod steadies and you get going, go ahead and move that slide, that hand back so you're not trying to do it when it's up here and getting hot and you're in a bind. Start out in a little bit of a bind. Um, if, you, if you can go ahead and, and start like in here and then as you're welding, you get more comfortable. It gets, it gets easier and, and you know, it's not like you're starting at a disadvantage where it's comfortable and then it starts to get hard and away from you. Uh, that's another thing. Um, there was one more. I've seen guys uh, take these rods and bend them a couple times, wrap them around their stinger and then take it out and clamp it to make them shorter. But, you know, that goes back to the shorter welding rod. I don't recommend that either because a lot of times that thing sticking out will arc off on something else. Um, make sure your stinger is holding the rod tight. If you've got slop in your stinger, even just a little bit, it is going to be awful. Uh, it, it, when you do strike off, it'll click to the next, you know, those tweakos, they have different levels. It, I've had that happen to me one time. It clicked in one and stuck in the side of the pipe and almost blew a hole in it. Uh, we had to fix it real quick. But uh, just remember, if you don't have to start here, you know, I've got plenty of meat down here to start off on. Go ahead and start down here. Let your rod do its flicking because you're going to have to get this thing going. Bing, and when you do that, it's going to shake. Go ahead and get it going. But while it's shaking and doing its thing, rod's getting hot, you're dragging down, getting ready to weld. Same thing. Scratch off on the bottom, let it shake, get going, and then start going. Okay? I don't think there's anything I left off, but I know I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I don't know everything. Uh, a lot of welders do. Uh, and truck drivers. The only person who knows more than a welder is a truck driver. <laughs> so I know a lot of people know way more than me. Please put it in the comments. Uh, it means a lot to me and everybody else. And you young guys, get in there. The old hands are, they're dropping some diamonds. Uh, they're, they're some really good older fellas that have been doing this a long time that are, that are leaving tips in the comment section. Hit the like button on your way out. Thank you so much. Have an awesome, awesome day. Later.